Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Happy Sunday. Uh, we want to welcome you to Kingdom Worship Center. My name is Walter Kennedy, uh, and I will be your little MC for this morning. Uh, we just want to say welcome, 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 wherever you are, on your couch, in your living room, in your bed, in your car. We want you to worship with us today. Um, we want to honor our set gifts, our Bishop Gregory Dennis and Pastor Tanya Dennis. Um, we also want to honor Archbishop Ralph Dennis and Lady Deborah Dennis. Um, Kingdom Worship Center is fun, impactful. We just come to worship today and we want you to worship with us. Is that okay with y'all? Get out your beds, get your PJs, tell your friends, share this video with everybody. Everybody, it don't even matter if you're in Baltimore, share it with everybody. We want you to worship with us. Uh, we want to start out with a word of prayer. So if you will bow your heads where you are, our Father and our God, we come before you right now just to say thank you, God. God, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. In the midst of it all, we thank you, God. God, there's so much going on right now, but God, you're still worthy. You're still wonderful. You're still awesome. You're still amazing. You're still making ways where there were no ways, God. And we honor you on today, Lord God. We thank you for being an amazing God, for being a provider, for being a healer, Lord God, for being the God that we know that you are, oh God. God, we ask, Lord God, that you will forgive us from our sins, Lord God. Cleanse us, make us new, Lord God. Anything that is not like you, remove it right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God. God, we ask that you would have your way in this place. We ask that you would have your way in our living rooms, in our bedrooms, in our cars, wherever we might be, Lord God, that you might reign, rule, and abide, oh God. God, be our keeper, be our provider, be our protector, Lord God. Lord God, reign in this place, oh God, and be who you called us to be, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. Lord God, we ask that you would use us for your glory, Lord God. Anoint every vessel in this place, Lord God. Whatever we might be dealing with, Lord God. Lord God, let us know that you have it all under control, Lord God, and that you're going to make a way, Lord God, and that you're going to keep making a way, Lord God, and that you have a safe in your arms, oh God. So God, we thank you. We honor you. We bless you on today. God, have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Y'all ready to worship? We want to bring up our minister, Minister Darian Dennis, to come worship with us. All right.
there's none like you. Into the darkness you shine. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes. Anytime soon, <laughs> he's gonna be that is his throne eternally. 
He still reigns and he rules. He still rules and he's sovereign. He's sovereign. And he's not finished till everything works out for good and for his glory. God is still God. And he is still able. And I will give him. God is still God. Still able and I won't give in. You're saying, God is still, still God. He is still able and I won't. Come on, you can sing it with us. It's simple. God is, God is still God. Still God. He is still able. Still able and I won't give in. God is. God is, you have it by now. Still God. And he is, he is still able. Still able. And I won't give. God is, God is still God. Still God. And he is, he is don't worry about your bills. Still able. Don't you worry about your circumstances. God is, God is still God. Still God. And he is, he is still able. Still able. God is, God is still God. He is, he is still able. Still able and I won't. Hey, hey, hey. God is still God. And He is still able. And I won't. God is, God is still God. And He is still able. I won't. God is, God is still God, and He is still able, and I won't oh, God is, God is still God.
trust you, Jesus. We believe you, Lord. We know you can keep us. We know you're going to keep us. We know you're going to heal the land. We know you're going to come see about us. We know you're going to come see about us. So we don't walk in fear because you're not finished. We know that you're not finished. We know that you're not finished. We know that you're not finished. You still have a work to do. Yes, Lord. You still have a work to do. You still have a work to do. You still have a work to do. You're gonna come see about us, Jesus. We're gonna wait right here, Jesus. We're gonna wait right here.
not defeated we've not been forsaken God is so faithful to us and season by season morning by morning the scriptures will say morning by morning morning by morning morning by morning brand new mercies we see we declare that God's compassion doesn't fail and we declare that great is his faithfulness the Lord is faithful to us the Lord is so faithful to us while we were there worshiping just for that moment I just pulled up the 28th Psalm and I just want to read for you before I get into some of this word for you today that I have for you Psalm 28 verse 7 it says that the Lord strengthens and protects me I trust him with all my heart I'm rescued and my heart is full of joy I will sing to him songs of gratitude the Lord strengthens his people he protects and he delivers his chosen king. God is on our side. I want to say that again. God is on our side. God is on our side. And I'm so excited about it. He has not forsaken his people. There is so much that's going on in this world today. And some of the stuff that's going on in this world today could cause many to become stressed and weary and anxious and all of those other things. But the truth is, is that if you're a believer, you know God. And you know God well enough to know that he will never leave you. God, I feel like talking already. He will never leave you and he will never forsake you. And that's what I'm excited about. I'm excited about a God who's faithful to his own. A God who looks out for us. A God who protects us. A God who guides us. A God who leads us. A God who's just so faithful. And we love him on this morning. We love him so much on this morning. This season is a very peculiar season. It's a peculiar season because there is so much that's happening. There's so much happening in this season, so much happening in this generation. As we looked into this generation, we talk about this being a generation of millennials, and, and, but, but better yet, we just need to call it a millennial generation, where that which has been standard for us, that which has been normal for us, are things that are now being challenged. Your, normal, your norms are being challenged as if your norms will work and and not just your norms in regular life but also our norms in the church have been challenged how do you believe God how do you trust God what do you believe God for all of these things are being challenged in our lives and even while they're being challenged at the same time we're in the midst as a culture as a world as a globe not just with the COVID-19 but also don't forget that there is climate change that's happening Climate change is something that's been very familiar. It's been going on for years, but climate change is also part of the hand of God. I want us to understand on this morning that the hand of God is very active in our lives. Regardless of what you see, regardless of what you experience, regardless of what it feels like, the hand of God is very involved in it. He has not taking his hand back out of the situation but God is very much active and involved in it there was something that I heard and and and, and I, I heard it and I wrote it down and 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 and, it, and I need you to hear this is that uh, we don't always comprehend what we anticipated or we don't always receive we don't always receive what we anticipated to get there are many times in our life when we say, you know what, God, this is what I need from you. This is what I want from you. And that's not always what we end up as a nice, sweet package. Sometimes we get something that looks a little bit different than that. But God is still faithful. Because even if you receive something that you did not anticipate, I promise you this, that what you are receiving from the hand of God is for the good in your life. 
for all things work together. I know I'm uh, for the good of them that love the Lord and are be called according to his purpose. Let me, let me, let me just move just so I make some sense. So in this season, one of the things that I really feel like we need to do is I want us to make sure that we are, we are remaining faithful and keeping our faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. If I had time to sing, Terry, I'd sing it, you know, have faith in God. Uh, have faith in God. Why have faith? See, because your faith, you can't allow your faith to slack in this season. Because if you allow your faith to slack in this season, what you will discover is that your faith causes you to be able to please God. Your faith gives you something to, to be able to engage God with. So in this season, continue to have faith in God. Your faith in God is going to cause doors to open up in your life. Your faith in God is going to cause you to be able to stand while everything else seems as if it's going chaotic. Your faith in God is going to cause you to be able to please God. For without faith, Hebrews 11 and 6, for without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. And so we want to make sure that we're in this place where we are pleasing God and we've got faith in him. And as you have faith in God, I need you to understand this, that your faith has has been on a particular journey towards you because your faith got to you one of two ways. It either got there by you once upon a time in a place of doubt or it got there by remembrance. It was either a place where you questioned God and you doubted what God was up to or a place where you had to remember what God had already done. See, these are two vehicles that causes our faith to really begin to explode and move in dimensions that we haven't seen before. And so while we're going through all of this COVID, climate change, uh, thank God, trillion dollar uh, release or rescue, whatever we're calling it these days, but we see numbers going up and the whole country is going red. What I decided to do in the season is to keep my faith in God. And as I keep my faith in God, I'm discovering that having that faith is causing me now to be able to please him. And when you please God, there's a great reward. I wish I had an amen in the sanctuary, a louder amen in the sanctuary. There is, when you please God, there is a great turnaround. When you're there in God's proximity, when you're there uh, in God's face. And so I want us to be in, be in this place where we are doing this. Let me, let me say this, I'm, I'm gonna get out of your way. Uh, faith has been our connector. I was, I was looking through some things, and when I was looking at, through some things, it was Peter who was in a place of doubt. It was Peter who was in a place of doubt when after he was, he was on the boat, and while he was on the boat, he then saw Jesus walking on the water, and while Jesus was walking on the water, he asked Jesus, can I bid me come? And Jesus says to him, come on and come, and then he says, when did you start doubting? And I know most of you probably said, well, Bishop G, his faith actually came before. His faith came before his actual uh, doubting. But his faith was increased after his doubt. See, what happens is when we go through seasons and eras and times of when we doubt God, don't allow that to be the end. Allow your doubt to usher you into a new measure of faith, a new measure of faith in trusting God, believing God, depending on God. There's a new measure. And, and I really, if I, if I just let me keep it as square with us as we possibly can. This COVID-19 and all of these other things that are happening is the hand of God in our lives. There is a shaking that is happening in the world so that the world can come back to Christ. Oh, I got two amens on that. Maybe I need about eight since it was like eight worship singers. Come on. If we need to get right back to the place where we realize that what's happening in our world is a shakeup and it has not caught God off guard. He's not surprised. He's not trying to figure things out, not trying to figure out how to save you from it. But while it's being released in the earth, can I tell you for believers, we need to be in a place where we're saying, you know what? I believe God is up to something. And since I'm on God's side, I declare that this is going to work out for me and for my good and for his glory. The other thing that, that I looked at, but I looked at this, I, I looked at this, uh, Darian Lee, you'll, you'll like this. 
There was a time when Peter, the same Peter, and we don't normally talk about this verse. Um, I wish I almost had it up on the screen. Uh, but, this, the, but the scripture comes out of Luke uh, chapter 22, verse 61. It's a very familiar passage of scripture. This is when the cock crows the third time. Yeah. And when it crows the third time, what happens is, is there's a remembrance for Peter. See, the other thing that happens that causes faith to really be introduced and in birth to a dimension and level that you haven't seen before is when you've got recall that I know God did something before. When you've got recall, when you say, you know what, I, I know that God is, has, has, is in a place where he can work it out again. When I can remember there are some things that he promised me and told me and it looks like it's beginning to manifest in this moment. And that word, and, and if I can just be, um, just take that word remembrance and take it back to the place where we are remembered again where God takes the pieces of us that have been broken off, the pieces of us that have become scattered, the pieces of us that have been hurt and disappointed and, and have been in dismay, all of those pieces, he takes those pieces and when we begin to remember God and faith comes back to us, that remembering is not just simply recall, but it is God taking the parts of me, the parts that were injured, the parts that were disappointed, the parts that were wounded, the parts that all of these things, the part that had joy, and he takes all of these parts and he puts them back together and now end up in a place where I can now begin to move forward again. Believers, I encourage us to move forward like we've never moved forward before. We're in this place of the world has called it uncertainty, but I'm telling you that prophetically God is calling this a place of opportunity, an opportunity where the believer will get to know a dimension of God like we've never known before. God has something in store for us. God is ready to take us to dimensions we have never seen before. So, so let me, let me I'm, going to, I'm going to turn a quick page on you, real quick. So then, Ezekiel 37. Uh, see, sometimes it's hard to keep your proximity gut with God when God takes you through some hard stuff. I need another, that's true, or something right there. When God takes us through some hard places, sometimes it's hard to keep a hold of his hand. It reminds me of my song that I was going to sing, Life is Filled with Swift Transition. Uh, but as we go through life, what happens in Ezekiel 37 is this, and you know it probably very well, is that the Spirit of the Lord takes Ezekiel and he takes him to a valley. And the, body, the Bible declares that he takes him to a valley of dry bones. And he asks the question there. And the question that God asked the prophet is he says, can these bones live? I like the question because the question is limited. It's not a question where he said, what can we do with these bones? He's not trying to find out if these are something we can do something else with. There's one question I want to know from you. And I want to know, can these bones live? But the Bible declares that these bones, are, these bones are very dry. And since they're very dry, I would have asked God, if I was in the same position, I would have said, why are you taking me to a place where death is expressed so loudly? Why are you taking me to a place where there's so much that's going on that seems uh, as if it's going to be the demise of me? But even in hard places... God asks you the right question. Yes. Oh, my God. And I wish we understood that God has a question for us while we're in the middle of climate change, COVID-19, children asking the same question. Oh, my God, children being home from school. All of these things that's going on. And in the middle of all of this, God's got one question for you. Can life come out of this? Yeah. Can life come out of what you're in the middle of? Everybody's been talking about the death that they're expecting. Good God Almighty. But I've come to let us know on this morning that it's not about the death that you've been expecting. It's about the life. The question is, can something come out of this that looks like it's living again? And the Bible declares that when he, the prophet began to speak what God said, it says that there was a shaking of the earth, that the whole earth had to respond to the utterance that came out of the prophet's mouth. And I'm here to let you know that not only will there be life, but this life is going to cause a 
shaking of the earth and we're going to find things moving throughout our atmospheres and our culture and our neighborhood and our cities and our neighborhoods. Everything's going to begin shaking because God is about to release life in a dimension that we haven't seen before. Oh, God, there's life that's coming in the midst of all of this. And I hope that you, like I, decide that I believe God's report more than anything else out of here. Whose report will you believe? The declaration is, we shall believe the report of the Lord. His report? Good God Almighty. I can't dance in here by myself, right? Okay. His report says I'm healed. Y'all, good God. His report says I'm free. I was just a couple of cuts. Even if you're home, throw out what his report says about you. It says you delivered. It says you've got a way out. It says he gives you a way of escape with every temptation. His report, what does his report say about you? And do you? Believe the report of the Lord. I choose to believe what God says. I know what it looks like, but I know God's up to something. And I trust in what the Lord is saying. Terry, play me some finished music, would you please? So I can get done and get out of here. The Lord has us in a very peculiar season. But God is all involved in it. I challenge us in this day, know your God better than you know your situation. Most of us are very proficient at knowing what we're going through and sensitive to all of the emotions and the feelings and the thoughts, and the philosophies that come with whatever we're going through. But in this day, know your God better. Know what he says about what we all are experiencing. If this is a global pandemic, whew, anticipate a global revival. Yeah. Good God Almighty. I wish y'all would just declare right from your house, wherever you are, and, all the places Walter talked about when he first got up. Declare, we are in the midst of a global revival because God is up to something. All right, let me pray with us. And we're going. Father, we thank you so much for an opportunity to seek your face, to hear from you. Pray, Lord, that even as we have so much going on in the world, that we won't let go of our faith. For without our faith, it's impossible to please you. And God, you are our primary concern. You're on our hearts, you're on our minds more than anything else. In fact, God, we refuse to allow what's happening in the world to replace the time we need to spend with you. So we stream during the week. We have small groups with friends. We do Zoom meetings and Google Hangouts and all the other stuff and FaceTime so that we can share what you're up to. Because this is a move of God that's happening in the world. And we declare that your plan and your purpose is going out throughout this globe at a rate that it never has before. This is a sign of the greater works that we need to do. And we thank you, God, for grace to execute our assignment. And we bless you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. And I know um, Archbishop Dennis is with us. And um, I'm so glad that he's here. And I just want to take an opportunity to share uh, with somebody who is a general in the kingdom of God. So just do me a favor, home and here, just do me a favor, put your hands together and let's welcome uh, His Excellency, 
Archbishop Ralph L. Dennis. Amen. Hey, man, have a seat. I know. Uh, thank you, Terry. Well, I'm dressed like you. Oh, people are dressed at home. <laughs> Downplayed it today. I'm very casual. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, you glad look to be here good. with you. Man. I'm glad you are here with me. I'm always glad to hear with you. Everybody always asks me whenever I'm anywhere. They say, you know what? Uh, what's your dad talking about these days? What is he saying? You know. <laughs> And uh, I think that everybody thinks I call you four or five times a day um, about things of God and what God is up to. Mm -hmm. um, they don't know that I normally call to ask for the truck uh, <laughs> to see if I can borrow it or something like that. Okay. Um, but okay. but as, as we talked about on, in this last little bit, that this seems to be a move of God. Yes, sir. Like God's hand is in this. Yes. Can you talk to us just a little bit about what you sense? Absolutely. I, I'd be glad to. Uh, this uh, is a season where, if you notice, there's no general word from any prophets. Wow. I believe it's part of God's efforts to get the people to hear him for, from, for themselves. If you, if you tighten down your earlobes right now and listen a little bit, you can't find anybody around the world. He can give a general word for what's happening. Wow. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. The, 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 um, now, I didn't hear this myself. Mm -hmm. I, I heard somebody uh, informed me of it, uh, that since the uh, Pope and all of the um, Catholics have not been able to come to Mass, yeah, sure. that he sent out word to hear God for yourself. Oh, I didn't know he said that, but I got a witness. <laughs> if the Pope bear witness, that's good <laughs> wow. wow. No, no, I, I have I've really locked in my, my ears to the voice of God, and one thing in doing that, I have discovered that this is a time, of the, I think I might have mentioned it to you last week, of recalibrating the believer. Yes. Uh, that's not a corporate recalibration where one recalibrates and everybody gets adjusted in a real line. No, this is an individual affair. Mm. We're doing this as unto the Lord for ourselves as we now have been inclined to hear God, to make sense of that which seemingly uh, is not rational. Yeah. Uh, we can't relate to it. There's no history book that um, outlines this. Now, it was prophesied some mm -hmm. years ago, mm -hmm. but right now there's... Uh, no one that I know who is locking in and saying this is what this is. However, I believe the Bible speaks of it and the solution we have for it. Okay. And more than anything else, and uh, I enjoy, by the way, I enjoyed the word of the Lord that you shared with us uh, this, this morning. But there's one thing that I, I'm confident of is that when we tell people about their tools, uh -huh. it's not a time for them to then just sharpen their tools, but began to use their tools. Yes, sir. You know, if we talk about the joy mm. of the Lord being our strength, don't just take that as a word to memorize or to think about. Start exercising the joy of the Lord. Amen. You know, put the put the uh, uh, the the sword to the enemy. Put the put the harvest uh, tools into the into the harvest. Mm -hmm. Start doing what the Lord says, because those tools work immediately. Amen. They work, and we have tools that the Lord has given us to use in times like these that should not, uh, we should not be uh, afraid to use at all, but watch God do what God does when we apply what God has given us. Oh, Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's why I'm a strong believer in 2 Chronicles 7, 14. We all know that text yes, sir. where the Lord spoke to Solomon when mm -hmm. Solomon was uh, dealing with the blessings of the temple that God had allowed him to build with his father, David. Uh, he then uh, said, Lord, if the people get to a place where they are in a foreign place and they get to the point where uh, their harvests are not being reaped and what have you, what do they do? Well, he said, if my people. Yes, sir. And, and we almost have to take yeah. that, that one verse and, and syllabalize mm. it, well, verse by verse. Yes, sir. Uh, or, or syllabus by syllable or phrase mm -hmm. by phrase. If my people. That's a, that's a hypothesis, right? Yes, if, sir. Then, right. Yeah, yeah. if my people, if that my people who are called by my name, and what makes that text so wonderful, it 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 uh, 
is a text not just for the Jews then, but for the Gentiles now. Amen. It was to the Jews then, but now all of us yes. are benefactors of this season that we call the Passover. Now, who's his people? That's not for us to judge. The Lord knoweth them that are his. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yes, sir. A lot, yes, sir. A lot of folks like to say his people there are Christians, but he yeah. didn't speak to the Christians. Ooh. He spoke to the Jews. We can apply it. Mm. <laughs> because we've been brought into the branch. Wow. But it wasn't really to him. So Jews and Gentiles are the people of God. We, we normally like to then justify, okay, it's for the Christians, it's for the believer, but it's not for them, it's not for those. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Whosoever ah. will, let him come. Ah. Let him come. If my people yes, who sir. are called by my name, name. Yeah. key right there, would do what? Humble, Humble themselves. Fast. Pray, seek my face, turn, turn from their wicked ways. That's something we must do. His people must do. Not the world. Amen. His people. Yeah. That's yeah. what we must do. Then will I hear from heaven? I forgive their sins. I heal their land. Heal their land. I don't think that's just a hypothetical. I think that's an actual promise that the Lord has given us. Amen. And we've got that tool accessible to us. Now, as you well know, um, Passover is April the 8th through the 16th. Yes, sir. In being the 8th through the 16th, it's a good time for Jews and non-Jews. Absolutely. To yes, observe sir. Passover mm -hmm. and do what that scripture tells us. Mm. And watch God do what he promised. Yeah. He's not a man that you should lie. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's the, he, neither is he the son of man Amen. that he hath need to repent. If he said he's going to do it, watch him do it. Amen. That's my song. Where's Amen. Terry? Let's sing. Watch him do it. <laughs> <laughs> I believe God would do it. Yeah. Thanks for having yeah. me here today. I oh, appreciate you. I'm, appreciate I'm so you glad so that you came to share. And, and, and I'm sure that uh, because in this generation that we're in, so many of us need to hear uh, the, a word from the fathers of the church. We need to be in a place where it's not just. Um, us pontificating, but mm -hmm. there, there are there are some generals who understand and know what's happening, and um, and I believe we ought to be tapping into those moments. And, yes, sir. And so I appreciate you sharing with me, uh, or sharing with us, sharing with us, uh, as we uh, looked at this uh, particular time and had this opportunity to sit and talk together. Uh, God is certainly up to oh, some he great is. things, he is, sir. and this he is. this. This, this opportunity, this Pentecost opportunity gives us great change, a great, it gives, us, gives us a great opportunity to witness and experience this global revival. Absolutely. This yes, global move of God, this hand of God throughout all of the regions that, and I just believe we're going to find, we're going to find some unexpected people, some unexpected places. Ooh, yes, Lord. I who love it. will declare, oh, I'm his as well. Um, and I'm, I'm excited about that. I really am. Okay. All right. So thank you so much for, for being with us on this morning. I pray that you've had a great, great uh, Sunday. And I pray as well that uh, you would just find opportunity to uh, sow into the kingdom of God. So we're Kingdom Worship Center. And uh, today you've experienced some of our worship leaders and band and all of those things. But we're also about a great work. Kingdom Worship Center does a great work in this region. Uh, in fact, um, I need men to come out on this Tuesday, the, the, uh, uh, and we're going to be going out into Baltimore County. We'll be delivering food to the Rice's Town area. Uh, we'll be up there and uh, wear your Kingdom Worship Center uh, t-shirts and or your Kingdom Impact t-shirts, and we'll be going out there doing some wonderful things. Uh, we also have been making sure that we're going to be doing some shopping for seniors. Uh, those seniors who can't go out during this time, uh, some of us who are a little younger, we'll put on our hand sanitizers, get our gloves, and we'll go out and get some groceries for those who are at higher risk or have underlining conditions. Uh, so join us with those things. But we need your help to help us do these yeah, things as well. Sure do. Um, as members are not throughout our pews. So join us in our time of giving and give generously to the kingdom of God. Um, your investments may fail. But giving to the kingdom of God never fails, never fails. God responds to us in folds. Uh, your interest rate will never look like what God, the return you can get from investing in the kingdom of God because he gives 30, 60, 100 fold 
according to your understanding. Uh, so if you have the opportunity, please, we, we welcome you to give with us generously through yeah. GiveLify, which is one of the apps. You'll find Kingdom Worship Center on that in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, you also can find us with Cash App if you have that with dollar sign KWC Giving. And then you can also join us with PayPal. Uh, but please uh, be with us, help us do the work of ministry. And if you can't give financially to us, do me a favor, a very big favor, pray with us, pray for us. As we pray for those who have uh, come down with the virus, uh, we pray for those who have um, even the flu, and there's a lot of things that are going on in our nation. We still have the opi opioid uh, epidemic, and we have the pandemic, uh, we have the flu virus killing thousands. Uh, we have climate change. Uh, I won't talk politically, uh, but we've got all these things going on. Uh, but God is still sitting on the throne. God is still sitting on the throne. And so we welcome you. And thank you for joining us. And please uh, look out for some things this week. Even join me with Zoom this week. This week I'll be Zooming uh, on Tuesday night. And just so that I come and speak and share with us, we have would love for you to join us at that time. God bless you. Enjoy your Sunday. Thank you for being with us. Thank you so much for joining us today in worship. We pray that you were blessed. And if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, this is a decision that you need to make today. Let me tell you, with so many things going on in our world today, what we really need is we need change from the inside out. We need a peace that surpasses all of our understanding and guards our heart and mind in Christ Jesus. So we invite you today to just give God your heart. Make him Lord of your life. The Bible says if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, then you can be saved. So I invite you to please join us with this simple prayer. Dear Father, we love you so much. We ask that you would come into our heart, change us. We crown you as Lord of our life, and we ask that you would lead us and guide us. We confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that you have come to save us, born from a Virgin Mary, and now has come to give us life eternal. And we love you so much in Jesus' name. Hey, look, it's that easy. The easiest transaction you will ever make in your life is that of salvation. So we pray that you have saved today and share this message with someone else that you love. God bless you.